uh, we are fortunate to have Dr. Subramanyam Swami ji here. As you know, he has been six time uh, member of parliament. He has been elected. He has been very involved in the Indian political scene for a long, long time. In Indian politics, uh, to have an intellectual and academician is a real commodity these days. So we are fortunate to have Swami Ji and I am going to ask him some questions about his life, about his achievements and about his future. How did you get involved in politics in the first place? Uh, I was originally an academician. I wanted to be a professor and I came to Harvard. I got a PhD. Uh, Nobel laureates uh, were my thesis advisor and they were all uh, greatly uh, my supporters also and therefore I became on the faculty when a time when Asians uh, being on the faculty at Harvard was a rare occasion. Uh, and in fact I was the first Asian to be in the economics department as a professor. But then uh, after about seven, eight years I began entertaining the notion of going back and uh, I was offered a professorship, a full professorship at the IIT Delhi. So I grabbed it and went back to India. That's how I went back to India. And in India, uh, when I entered, uh, when I came to India around the time when Mrs. Gandhi had split the Congress party, she relied on the uh, communists for support and she became very left-wing, banks were nationalized. And I was against this. Uh, I thought that uh, India needed market economy, that's natural for India. So I started speaking against it and I got a lot of support from the students. I never used it in class, right. but uh, outside uh, in the evening, the hostels and uh, various common places like India International Center in Delhi, we used to have uh, seminars, used to debate the communists, defeat them. I became, uh, with my Harvard background, I became a kind of a glamour figure in the intellectual circles. So that uh, uh, activated the communists who persuaded Indira Gandhi to support uh, my removal from my IIT professorship. Now, right. That was very legally impossible because I was a, 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 a full professor and there was no way you could remove me uh, unless I've committed some crime. But they one day just sent me a letter saying you're dismissed. No inquiry, nothing. And uh, when I uh, went and spoke to the authorities and said, how can you do this? They said, well, go and fight in court. We have done it. Let's see what you can do. I did go to court, and uh, but it took me 21 years to win that case. So in the meantime, I had to either go come back to America and settle down, or do something else in India because the academics they blocked every other, no other place I could get a professorship. So I decided to enter politics. That's how I entered politics. I entered politics through Johnson, and uh, very soon got elected. And having got elected, the emergency came. The emergency came from it. That's how the whole Janata Party came to power in '77. And then Prime Minister and the, and the Himachal Chief Minister, Mr. Shanta Kumar, they both got me appointed as a mem member of the Board of Governors of IIT Delhi, the very body which sacked me. So it was a vindication. Later on, the courts reinstated me. But then I was a minister at that time, so I could not continue as professor. So, it resigned. so, so it's an interesting story. Even I was not knowing that. You are not a career politician, yeah. but you are so famous that we think that you <laughs> must be in politics from your childhood. So it's very interesting to know that an academician who was not a career politician entered into the politics. What was your, the reaction from your family, from your wife, and uh, from your uh, in, in India? Politicians are considered to like Gundas uh, yeah, no, or what, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. Well, in the beginning, I think naturally because my father was a civil servant and my father-in-law was also a civil servant, my daughter, was, uh, my wife was brought up as a daughter of an ICS officer, and so they they had a very uh, strong dislike for politics and so on. But then these uh, events which happened, the unfairness of it, and the fact that it was done by the communists. Uh, they then ended up supporting me. I'm very happy to say my father-in-law actually bought me a house in uh, in Delhi and said, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about uh, where to where to live and who's going to pay the rent. Uh, I donate a house to you. Right. So uh, there was uh, support, concern, of course, that will I will I survive in politics? It's such a dirty field. 
you know, I'm a new man, etc. So those were the concerns, but that I had no alternative uh, but to go into politics if I was to remain in India. There were many, many relatives who thought I should go back to America. In fact, they thought I should have made a mistake in coming in the first place. But I must say that my family and my uh, my daughters were too young that time to protest. One was five years old, another was three, you know, two and a half years old. So, the, but uh, I had really no problem from the family. Um, it is very unfortunate that in India, which is known to be the largest democracy in the world, that uh, certain things like your case that you yes. were uh, teaching as a professor yes. and then you were vindicated because of yeah. your particular views about yes. politics. Yeah. So it is very unfortunate that in India these things do happen yes. and you had to enter into politics to really yes. change right. that kind of system. So. Yes. Uh, it's a very interesting story for all of us, yeah. but it, and it is wonderful that uh, we have people, educated people like my brother. I would like that every educated person should really enter into politics because if you really want to make changes in India, yes. we need people yes. and persons like you. Now coming back to your political party. I entered first as Jansang. Jansang, okay. But Jansang then merged into Janta Party during the emergency. So what, uh, how did you land up with the, the ministerial position yeah. as a minister? Well, first time I was offered a ministership was in 1977, it was the, but it was a junior rank minister. They didn't offer me cabinet rank on the grounds I was too young. Right. Uh, but I thought... What was your, um, uh, sorry to interrupt, what was your age when you... Minister, I think there also there was some opposition from Vajpayee. Uh, and uh, he thought that I was being projected by RSS as his, as his rival. So he was keen on eliminating me. So he knew I would not accept a junior ministership. So, so at that time I then opted for party post. And uh, then continued Janta Party when BJP was formed and all the Jansang people left Janta Party. Um, and in 1990 with the help of uh, with in, in alliance with, uh, uh, with uh, Rajiv Gandhi, uh, I was able to uh, create a new government headed by Chandrasekhar. That's when I first became a minister. Right. This government was succeeded by Narasimha Rao's Congress government, who wanted me also as a minister, but he wanted me to join Congress party, which I refused. So, so he appointed me as a chairman of a commission on GATT and WTO with cabinet rank. So right. I have uh, attended cabinet meetings. Uh, had a cabinet rank position and so on. So um, I was twice minister that way. So what are your notable achievements as a minister which you think that you really made a mark in the Indian political scene? Well, I, I, I think most the reasons why people know me in the length and breadth of India is not got to do with my ministerial work, but more as uh, in terms of opposing the government and, and, and in fact doing as an independent member, as a person without being in government, doing it. For example, my campaign against the market, uh, socialism and in favor of market economy. Almost everybody admits, in fact, the other day uh, Manmohan Singh made in a speech, he said the first person who said that socialism will not work in India, when everybody was saying it will work for India, it's best for India, was, uh, was Swami. And so he has, gone on record. So that's one great, great achievement. The second achievement I did was I got uh, both China and uh, Israel relations improved with uh, India and both countries they recognize that. In fact in Israel they have planted 10 trees in Jerusalem in my uh, memory, in the, uh, uh, in, in the memory of my contribution to the Indo-Israel friendship. In the case of China my friendship ultimately led to uh, them agreeing uh, which everybody thought will never have happened, but uh, they agreed to allow India Hindu pilgrims to go to Kailash Mansarovar. Right, right. They had closed the door, and uh, in fact, their top leader, Tung Xiaoping, said, You must go there first. So I agreed to go first, and I was the first Tirth Yatri uh, after 35 years uh, to Kailash and Mansarovar. And Kailash Mansarovar's development, etc., was my contribution. Uh, later on, when I became Commerce Minister, I signed the first trade agreement which is considered landmark between India and, and China and today China is the largest trade partner of India. So uh, we, uh, um, uh, this is then of course uh, uh, economic reform package as a commerce minister I produced it which Nasima Rao implemented although the credit has largely gone to Manmohan Singh but actually to Nasima Rao and myself 
who, who did it. So basically, and you laid the foundation. I prepared the package. Uh, new, uh, yes, I uh, prepared the package. I prepared the intellectual foundation by arguing against it for years and years, and uh, and created an intellectual climate for it. But the package for economic reform was introduced during Janta, uh, Janta Party government of Chandrasekhar's prime ministership. And uh, that time I introduced it, and uh, there, thereafter, Narasimha Rao government was appointed. And of course, I was a minister rank position in uh, his government too. Uh, later on, uh, uh, I became famous for filing PILs on corruption. I brought many politicians to Brook. Uh, Mr. Ramkrishna Hegde was thoroughly exposed. And in fact, he had, his political career was destroyed because right. of that. Similarly, Jailalita's matter in case I also filed as she went to jail in one of my cases. So uh, I became famous in, in those PILs. The last uh, seven, five, six years I have become very well known in the country because of my propagation of the idea that Hindus are under siege. And the latest uh, achievement I have is that if I, I was able to argue and successfully argue in the Supreme Court that Ram Situ cannot be touched, cannot be broken. Yeah. And uh, the Supreme Court upheld this view and asked the government to find another way of doing the same project without touching Ram Setu. I'm um, at it now. I'm working on many of these other aspects of the Hindu cause, uh, and I think the most important thing now in India is to have a Hindu Renaissance. Uh, I, I mean, when I was offered, yes. my, it's 36 years. Old. I think, as you said, that after 35 years, you were one of the first pilgrims going to Kailash Mahal. I think you have the blessings of uh, Lord, Kailash, yeah. Lord Shiva and Kailash. And then you have worked on Ram Setu. So I think yeah. you have the blessing. Uh, to that extent, yes. Without Deva Nagra, nobody can function in India. Admission is a rare commodity these days. So we are fortunate to have Swami Ji, and I'm going to ask him some questions about his life, about his achievements, and about his future. How did you get involved in politics in the first place? Uh, I was originally an academician, I wanted to be a professor and I came to Harvard, they got a uh, We are fortunate to have Dr. Subramanyam Swamiji here. As you know, he has been six time uh, member of parliament, he has been elected. He has been very involved in the Indian political scene for a long, long time. In Indian politics, uh, to have an intellectual and a Mrs. Gandhi had split the Congress party, she relied on the uh, communists for support and she became very left-wing, banks were nationalized and I was against this. Uh, I thought that uh, India needed market economy, that's natural for India. So I started speaking against it and I got a lot of support from the students. I never used it in class, right. but uh, PhD, uh, Nobel laureates uh, were my thesis advisor and they were all uh, greatly uh, my supporters also and therefore I became on the faculty when a time when Asians uh, being on the faculty at Harvard was a rare occasion uh, and in fact I was the first Asian to be in the economics department as a professor but then uh, after about seven eight years I began entertaining the notion of going back and uh, I was offered a professorship a full professorship at the IIT Delhi so I grabbed it and went back to India. That's how I went back to India. And in India, uh, when I entered, when I came to India around the time when 